Right. Welcome. Uh, so I am calling to order at 10.03, the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee meeting um, for April 13th, sorry, I should say, April 13th at 10.03. Um, and uh, let's see, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. And now we'll just take a moment to make sure everybody can be heard. And so we'll start with you, Pat. Uh, present. Jennifer. Present. Anika. Present. And Mandy. Present. Excellent. All right, so I want to apologize for the confusion on this morning's meeting starting a little bit later than what um, we've been uh, we've been used to starting at nine. And so that will mean that we need to <clears throat> make some changes to our agenda. So I thought I'd just quickly review what we will be doing today. Um, the item that we will not be covering today is the town council standing committee structure. Um, and again, that's one that we've been working on for quite a while. So hopefully at our next meeting, we'll be able to really devote um, a bunch of time to, to get that voted on, dis, a, a discussion and recommendation for the town council. Um, and we'll also be um, talking hopefully about our equity lens review process, which has also been on hold for quite a while now. So today we are going to work with sponsors on the Jewish American Heritage Month proclamation and the Arbor Day Proclamation, and we will also do the Finance Committee appointment recommendation. And I have invited sponsors for the Jewish American Heritage Month Proclamation to come at 10. So I'm just checking here. I think we might, yeah, we have Dorothy. So I think we're okay in terms of quorum of the council to invite Dorothy in. Um, and Rabbi Ben Weiner did say that he would try to join if possible. Um, I was really happy to hear back from him, and um, but he's not here yet. And Hilda was not able, Hilda Greenbaum was not able to join us um, this morning. So, hi, Dorothy. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for joining us. So, um, Dorothy, I don't see Rabbi Weiner here yet, but we'll start working on this and then we'll keep our eye out in okay. case he joins us. Um, so, Mandy's pulling that up. And I wanted to start, Dorothy, just by giving you the floor to talk a little bit about your reasoning for bringing this forward and initiating this and anything that you would like to share with us about this proclamation before we move into the review. Um, well, um, the idea came to me, um, uh, I guess it was Hilda had spoken to you and had said, um, we're doing a lot of proclamations and um, what about Jewish Americans? And um, I thought about it and I said, yes, because we really do a lot of proclamations and we wanted to be inclusive. And I think we're a little bit inspired by An Anika's work on the proclamation for Juneteenth, which had some local references in it. And so the thought was um, to, do, to, to refer to some of the Jewish life in Amherst. Um, but that led me into a rabbit hole, which was very fun. Um, and um, I, I consulted some of the experts here and there, and it was decided you can't mention a few names. I mean, we have some wonderful, great people uh, in the, who contributed uh, Jewish Americans to the life in Amherst. But if you mention this one, why not that one? So that's why there are no names. Um, but it, it was a fun and interesting um, uh, history. And um, it, it was that somehow Amherst did not have many Jewish people except for some um, uh, people who opened stores, and they were very small, small group. Um, but it was when the um, UMass went into a big, big ex expansion phase that a lot of Jewish faculty came in, and all of a sudden looked around and said, "Boy, I love Amherst. 
but what about Jewish education for my kids, which is the thing that's something that resonates with, with truthfully with, with Jewish Americans all over the country, because that is what you look for. And um, so uh, we just have, there's just been so many riches and, and, and we really couldn't put all of them in here, but we, try, we made some reference to it. Um, so it was kind of, it was fun doing um, and um, um, there's a lot that goes on into, into proclamations as Mandy Jo knows, who I think is probably the proclamation queen. So um, I, I welcome any corrections, additions, changes that you may have. Um, and um, that's really what I have to say. Thank you, Dorothy. And thank you for working on this and, and, and bringing it together and forward. And um, we will go through and do a sort of a paragraph by paragraph, but I want to, um, Nika, I see that your hand is raised. Yes, I just, I have a question uh, for Dorothy. Did you notice, or um, let me just back up a little bit. I remember seeing a local film, this may have been last year, I think, uh, where Amherst Media did produce it. And it was about, uh, I don't want to misquote myself, but I think it was about communities, um, Jewish communities that were in Connecticut and like about the businesses they started, communities that they developed, but there was also a note in um, just the history in terms of how long they had been around and that a lot of the community members uh, were not claiming their Jewish heritage. Um, and so I was wondering if you, if there was any um, link to that here, like in terms, because I noticed you said that, you know, back when you were tracing the Jewish population and there were just few, numbers, I'm wondering if, you know, there could have been populations that were maybe here, you know, before um, we might think about because they weren't claiming heritage. Um, that's an interesting question. Um, I did not find any of that here in Amherst. I, I, there were a, a Jewish community in Northampton. Um, the earliest Jews in Amherst were Yiddish speakers. So they also spoke English so they could do their businesses, but they, they kind of, um, kept to themselves to a certain amount. Um, although their kids went to the high school and that process of course leads to Americanization. Um, so that when at some point, um, when a, some non-Yiddish speaking Jews came, it turned out they didn't really socialize with the others because of the language difficulty. Mm -hmm. So uh, somehow Amherst was not a very Jewish place. Um, and, um, but Northampton did have a community. I know Connecticut had, a, had a, an older, much older Jewish community, you're right. But just, Anika, just one reference. One of the people I wanted to mention was Julius Lester, a uh, black man who had started out uh, really, you know, very 60s person um, and made a change in his life, converted to Judaism and switched from the African American department to the um, Jewish heritage, to the Jewish um, department. I can't remember the name of it right now because I, I, I had those in, things in here originally and I think I took them out. Um, so that, that Amherst's um, history has is, is got a lot of very interesting people. Um, but I don't think that there were that many, that, that in terms of people who are Jewish and not claiming it, um, we had a lot of people here who are Jewish who are not what you would call religious. So that was the challenge of the JCA. How do you have one Jewish community of Amherst, which includes people who are very religious and those who are really Judaism as a tribe, as, as a, a ethical system, or even just as a memory you know, of ancestors. Um, and that's really the accomplishment of the JCA that it has created a place where Jews in Amherst can come together with very, very different um, you know, points of view on, on, on religion and various things. Um, so I guess that's, that's really my answer on that one. Thanks, Dorothy. And just to add, if, if you are interested in the history of Amherst, I don't know if you can see this, but this is called Essays on Amherst History. And it's really a great book, um, a compilation of essays and um, some visuals in there. So I've had it from the library for way too long. <laughs> Um, I have to return it, but there are other copies. Um, good, good. And I see Jennifer's hand is raised. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add, well, first of all, I did want to say with Julius Lester, 
um, his, he has, his grandfather was Jewish. He didn't, it wasn't just, um, yeah, that he studied Judaism and I mean, he, he discovered that link and that's how he got on, on the road. But, um, the, the, the Jewish community is very proud <laughs> that, you know, um, of, of that connection. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, you know, um, he's, you know, such a, a huge figure, you know, in the U S and the world. And I, for whatever it's worth, I just wanted to add, because I think this is interesting that because the National U Yiddish Book Center is here, um, you know, that really puts, I mean, it's another something else that puts Amherst kind of on the map. And when COVID happened, you know, the Yiddish Book Center has, you know, weekly lectures and, you know, depending on who was here, they may have 25 people, 150, 200. And as soon as the center had to close down because of COVID, the lectures immediately went online and people, have stream in from all over the world. They have thousands of people, you know, um, zooming into the lectures. So it really also put Amherst on the map globally, which I think is kind of neat. <laughs> Just want to add that. Mm. That's really interesting. Yeah, it, that's yeah. such a great, great place too that we have. We have so many gems in this community. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really blessed. Um, yeah, Dorothy, did you want to respond to well, that? I, I will tell you that there is a strong um, thread. Okay, one of the experts that I spoke to, I, I will not name, when I was asking for information, more information, um, said to me something which I have to say is so reminiscent of the older Jews that I have known before, which was, oh, you know, we, we kind of keep our head down. We don't really want to, there was this feeling of, not wanting to stand up and say, hey, look at us, we're the Jewish community of Amherst, wanting to play it down, uh, always keeping kind of a low profile. Um, and because um, I think somebody said, why haven't there been more Jewish uh, proclamations? And I think that's why. I think that's why. Is that people haven't sought them. But um, I thought this was, and, and I'd never even heard of the Jewish American Heritage Month before. Uh, it's a relatively recent thing. Um, so um, I, I think it's very nice that we'll be doing this, but um, just understand that it's actually, a, 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 it's a modest community in its way, not wanting to say, um, look at us and give us all this and that. Um, so that's why it was kind of, it was kind of hard to do this. It was hard, kind of hard to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, you took it from scratch and really, you know, appreciate the work that you did to talk with folks about doing, about putting this forward and, um, yeah, Anika. I just wanted to say, I'm glad you did bring it forward. Um, you know, just personally, I've spent the majority of my life really intertwined and right next to, um, Jewish communities and have with my connection with millinery been fortunate to be invited into some communities in, in Williamsburg and Crown Heights, Brooklyn, where, um, okay. you know, I, I, it was, I just felt, um, you know, just privilege to be brought in um, to these communities, which are usually um, exclusive and not for, you know, not to, to shun anyone, but just, you know, um, this has just been a tradition. Uh, so yes, thank you for bringing this forward and calling attention to uh, the roots in Amherst. Um, I, I do want to comment that Anika is so right. There has been long, long relations between Black and Jewish communities. Uh, often uh, living in neighborhoods uh, next to each other. And of course, Orthodox women wear hats. I mean, they are your absolutely best customers. <laughs> but, um, you know, in, in the family that I married into, um, you know, um, it's just a common thing of, of Jews and, and civil rights and working with blacks is just, an, it's an old connection. It's an old connection. Of course, not everybody, but it's, it's a lot of common values. Uh, a lot of, of, um, of um, cultural exchange between the two groups. So I appreciate that. Excellent. All right. So let's go ahead and begin reviewing the proclamation. And um, we'll start like we always do with the council sponsors and the community sponsors. Um, I just want to say, while I appreciate, I don't know, my name is on, on here and I fully, fully support this. Um, and I was, you know, in conversation with Hilda and Dorothy 
when we got this started, but I would like to take my name off of it because I want to honor the people that really worked on this. Um, and um, so that's my reasoning is just really trying to think thoughtfully about what I put my name on and what I have personally invested in something, but I of course fully support this and, and really value it. Um, and I see Mandy Joe's hand is up. I, I just wanted to talk about the changes, including having moved before you removed your name, Michelle, you to the front, which was not to, um, you know, be anything other than the, the typical way we list these is counselors first and then community. And we list it by last name only. And we've always done alphabetical. Now, if that's the history. Now, maybe we should think differently about how we list the counselors is what I wanted to point, because it sounds like Dorothy was the one that did a lot of the work. She alphabetically now she ends up first, but maybe as a GOL committee, instead of just defaulting to alphabetical, we should think potentially about doing it some other way in the future or now. But that's why those changes were there. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, I'm starting to work on sort of a format for a later discussion that we'll have, um, having followed a meeting with some staff um, about proclamations and how we can um, have a, a system that is fair and equitable and also engages the community. So I'll add that as something that we can have as part of that discussion. Um, I think alphabetical is great. Because often more than one counselor will be working on something. And I, you know, I don't think we need to be thinking about who's the first and whatever. I think alphabetical, if, if anyone questions it, their mind will tell them in a few minutes, oh yeah, it's alphabetical. It, I think it's fairer. All right. Put Michelle back in there, Miller back in there. <laughs> um, so we have um, counselors Pam, Shane, Steinberg, and Tob, um, who are sponsoring this and who have, in my understanding, been in communication um, as this was getting worked on. And we have community sponsors Hilda Greenbaum and Rabbi Benjamin Weiner. Um, so thanks to, and I'm just checking my, the audience, I do not see, um, Rabbi Weiner here. So, uh, yes, Dorothy, please. Um, I have not, I have emailed, uh, Kathy. I have not gotten an answer back. So the communication is not full at this point. I'm assuming I, I've, I sent her an email and she didn't say no, but she didn't say, oh yes. So I think I have to try once again to communicate with her. Okay. Uh, that's okay. Okay. Sure. We can figure out a way to make that. And I could also even try to send her a text in a minute. <laughs> um, and that, that might be the most, the quickest way to get to her. Yes. Good. Um, all right. So um, are there any other, I, I think if, if anyone else would like to be added to this, I think this went out in an email to all of the counselors. These were the um, responses that we received. So we can, excuse me, Sergio. <laughs> um, we can move on uh, to our review, starting with the first paragraph here. And as usual, either just chime in or raise your hand if you have something to say about this. Okay, um, then moving to the second paragraph. And just note that that's in quotes uh, from the um, presidential proclamation, that paragraph. Okay, so we'll want to, yeah, sorry. I was going to say, which is why I didn't attempt to split it up because it's multiple sentences, because you're quoting the whole thing. So. Right, good. <laughs> yeah, so do we, but do we want to, so we don't need to say that, like the, is it clear that the proclamation, which proclamation we're talking about here? Let's see. I thought it was when I read it. Okay. Yeah, I did too. Wait, so what proclamation are we ref 
for so these are resolutions maybe it, it George was Bush proclaimed there it is yeah, so it's a proclamation. president bush's proclamation on proclaiming may jewish american heritage month do we need to <clears throat> link how we did for juneteenth or no link to that like a set to say that yeah okay now it's clear to me sorry i had to read that one more time um yep if i get a if 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 they if you want a hyperlink dorothy um if you just send me the link i can add that hyperlink in before i send it on to michelle and athena okay yeah that was great we did that with the june is that what you, that's what you said anika yeah with the juneteenth that's a good okay that was good. i'm still not um, i can do the i can send links but sometimes i have to it takes me a long time thinking through what I'm doing when I do it. Uh, it doesn't come naturally yet to send links. But I, will, <laughs> I will do that. Okay. We can probably find it too if you uh, need. Yeah. But I just thought this was important because most people I know had never ever heard of this. And this is like news. Um, so uh, it's important to kind of establish that, yes, this is kind of new. Uh, it's a new way of doing things. Um, and um, it's, it's interesting. And, and I, what I like about it is that this is something about Jewish Americans, but it's also linking to all kinds of other Americans who come and keep a kind of dual heritage. You're American, you're very American, but you're also something else at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that it's um, uh, connecting the Jewish American experience with that of other peoples. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, and does the word that the proclamation reads that is that that word is fine there? Yep. Okay. All right. You guys know. Yeah. So then let's move on. So the formatting was just that it was in gray for some reason. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no idea why it was the only thing in a weird I color. Know. <laughs> and I couldn't make it change. I, 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 yeah. This is all a mystery sometimes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> okay. Any comments about the throughout their history paragraph? Well, I'm wondering if it, it says throughout their history, but well, maybe you're right. We we could drop the there. Well, I was thinking our history. Our but history, yeah. More, yeah. Okay. But I, I think that's better. Yeah. 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 I I agree. I think we need to normalize what is American history. Yeah. Right. right. Stop othering. So the other thing is. Uh, some of those words were in something that I read, and then I added two or three other categories, bringing it more up to date. Um, I added technology, uh, and I added literature and the arts, which somehow had wasn't there. So I'm saying, take a look at this now, all of you, and is there some other thing that I that could be added in that list? I thought it was a pretty good list. I did too. So yeah. All right. Good. Contribution to society and culture. In science, do we, the word in is? Culture, science. Um, we should just say science. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I read it as contributions to society and culture, sort of with having oh, dropped the including science. Yeah, within. So yeah you're right. Been, right, so right, the, right. The, the you're right. after culture maybe disappears. It, right. So it, 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 uh, sometimes you can use a, a colon there. That's what I would use as a colon because it's a list. Um, if that's what you're saying, if it's a list, yeah, um, then use the colon, yeah. Right, because that is society and culture, right? And so, does society and culture? I think what you were asking, Dorothy, is does is does that cover everything? And it sounds like um, people think that it does. So let's I, I think the in has to come back. Oh, you do. Yeah, even though there's a even colon. with a semicolon and a colon. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, uh, I think that's right. Matt, I think Matt has done a lot of proclamations. Yeah, I uh, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Sometimes I think it's just your feel for things, you know, when you're familiar with something that. It just. I, I do think science in has to be there. It reads a little funny. 
Yeah, without. Yeah. With it or without? Oh, yeah. But should the in be before the colon then? I, I'm confused at why the in is. I'd the get rid of the colon and right. Go. Just leave it as it was. I think just no comma and just it's a sentence. Yes, no comma. Perfect. Okay, great. Okay. All right, that's settled. Let's move on. Um, whereas <laughs> as we celebrate the rich heritage, let's read that. I one. only added the comma after Holocaust for the Oxford thing. The list of three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or four. Yeah. I think it's technically three. Okay. And that's what we've been doing, I think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, Any other comments on yeah. this? Yeah, right. I would put the comma there, right? Good. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Whereas the institutions of higher education. Higher. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> See, it's amazing. I just it's amazing. read it right it's in the first time I read it. Yeah. We, we, we just gestalt in. people. We fill in what's not there and don't notice it's missing. <laughs> okay. Does that look good? All right. Yeah. Whereas the influx of Jewish families. So... I read this as two clauses, which is why I threw the and in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. The expansion and then the concern for Jewish education of their children and for community led. Yeah. And for children and community. Can we say and the concern? Right? Well, I would say led to a concern. The expansion led to a concern? Yeah. But the concern led to the establishment of the JCA. It did. Right. It did. And, and that's what it was. It was a traveling Hebrew school. Oh, wonderful fact I couldn't include in here. The, oh, the yeah. early Jews, the earliest Jews, like the shopkeepers, they want, they, what they did for their kids' Jewish education, they got tutors from, from Mass Aggie. And That's I just thought that was so fabulous. And I said, Jewish people at Mass Aggie? And I asked, and somebody said, yeah, they, they were sent over from Boston, the whole Boston area, because you know you have kosher chickens and kosher food. And I don't know. So that actually they got Hebrew tutoring from Mass Aggie students. So. All right, so led to the concern. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm which resulted in nice. <laughs> I like that. Uh, does that seem good for everyone? The, the finally finding, who, it, oh. who is the wrong thing, but found? Okay, let me- I don't know. Like, I, think I, I think found. Finally, finally found, found a permanent home. Should there be- um Like who finally found, or I, I don't want to use which again. Finally found. Finally found. I'm with you, Pat. Should there be a comma back to the witch between community and witch? Okay. Sure. Yeah. I think witches get commas and yeah. that's don't. <laughs> exactly. That's what. They get them when they're non-restrictive, <laughs> which I don't teach because it's so complicated. Restrictive and non-restrictive clauses. So let me think about that. I think we're missing a, another which or who or yes I agree um because this is not uh, yeah okay resulted in the establishment of the JCA which finally found, which finally its, permanent found home. its permanent home yeah too many yeah. witches but <laughs> yeah Oh, we could change this one to that, that resulted, led to the concern that resulted Very in the nice. establishment. Yes, yes, Get rid yes. of this comma. Turn yeah, just put that. that. Mm -hmm. That has a better flow. Well, I still, I prefer, I like led better than resulted. Resulted is a little too firm and led is a little more wishy-washy because it was a little bit more um, back and forth. There were other things going on. I mean, there are also people who wanted a minion and they also are part of the JCA. 
although the more orthodox people still tend to go over to Northampton. How do you guys, how do you feel about the word ultimately in, in a paragraph like this? Like, because we're using lead twice, right? So, but what we're saying oh. is the concern. Right. But see, I think we can get rid of this lead because it's the influx of Jewish families whose concern for the Jewish right. education. Yes, so I think we can just nice. change this to whose that. concern. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Then you would get rid of that. that. Who's concerned for the Jewish education of the children in the community led to? Right, so we, we've gotten rid of two things, great. <laughs> Which finally found its prominent home in the second congregational church. Mm -hmm. I did find the, the discussions of the, that uh, really very meaningful. And Hilda and Louis Greenbaum had played a very big role in that. Um, mm -hmm. The Congregational Church did had offers for more money to become a business or something converted. They did not want that. They wanted to stay as a house of worship. And so they went out of their way to uh, make it possible for the Jewish community of Amherst to buy them. And uh, Louis Greenbaum there was the, the package was too big because it included the parish house. He said, I'll buy the parish house so that'll make a smaller mortgage. And so it was, it, it was a, a really strong work on both sides, the congregational and the Jewish side to, to bring that about. And I think it's a, a wonderful thing. And as you all know, CPA money was used in the last couple of years to support that steeple with the symbolic acorn on the yep. top. Right. Um, because it, 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 it matters a lot, I think, when you're driving in the town of Amherst to see the congregational churches, so. Absolutely, yeah. And so the word finally is, is to sort of um, share that there was some process that was, led to yes. that, that was, yeah, okay, all right, so. It's, it's like Moses in the desert, okay? It was a long, complicated process. And finally, finally, really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. Where is the Yiddish Book Center? I just added I, another I, comma. I I believe the formal name is National Yiddish Book Center. Let me just check. Yeah, that. I think it is. That's good. Thank you. Okay. And I wonder, it regenerate Yiddish language. It should be the Yiddish language. And my, well, it depends upon whether they're regenerating yeah. Yiddish language literature and modern Jewish literature, or they're regenerating the Yiddish language and they're regenerating modest Jewish literature. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know yeah. which the answer is. Uh, uh, we'll leave Jennifer, it. do you yeah, know? leave it alone. Yeah. Because I don't know. I was, I was puzzled by some of that wording, but I took it from Yiddish Book Center thought, thing, but I think you're right. I should have included the national. That's fine. And I just want to say um, to Sarah, who's in the attendees and is here for the Arbor Day proclamation, we'll be finishing this up very um, shortly and we'll be able to bring you in for that very shortly. Thanks for your patience. All right. So where are we? I, I was looking up Sarah's. The last <laughs> We're at the last Okay. It just gets the period, and I thought it was missing the the before Pioneer Valley. Right, right. Okay. I mean that that is one of the interesting things uh, that that there are so many Jewish farmers in this area, not necessarily affiliated um, as religious Jews, but um, as you know the. The Bible is a kind of an agricultural document. All the Jewish holidays are agricultural. Um, well, most of them are agricultural holidays. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing. And our, our food bank of Western Mass, all those things are just part of this. And I guess this, I think Simple Gifts Farms would, uh, there's just a lot of, of idealism uh, in, in the farming movement in our area. I'm wondering in, in the now, therefore, do we really need to say the city known as, isn't it just, we? it is the town of Amherst, that, that's, I don't know. That, that's fine. 
<laughs> I think Mandy, Joe, and Pat, you, you, you've done a lot of these. Whatever's supposed to be, should be. I think yeah. we've been pretty consistent with just the town of Amherst. Good, good. Yeah. That, that reminds me though, up here, we had city of Amherst here. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh. Yeah. Good catch. Didn't even notice. Didn't even see it. Yeah. And Dorothy, um, while we don't have a, um, a process fully in place in terms of these, one of the things that we discussed at a recent meeting or that I did with Lynn and some staff is if a, a counselor brings a new proclamation forward mm -hmm. and would like to have an event tied to it, so whether it be a reading or, or whatever, that that counselor should reach out to Lynn um, and work with Lynn in planning that. So if you have anything in mind with respect to that, that's what, that's the way to go right now. Okay, I, I will consult with Rabbi Ben on that um, and I'll get back to you, okay? That's great. All right, are we ready to make a motion? And Jennifer, I'm going to um, ask you if you would be so willing to make the motion. I will. I hope I have the correct language. Um, I uh, move to adopt the Jewish American Heritage Month proclamation as uh, we have just written. Do we normally include clarity, consistency? Uh, we, we, we don't adopt anything. We, no, we don't. We, we them clear, consistent, and actionable. Right. We can, that's right be referred to the council. So okay. I move Perfect. that this be declared, the Jewish American Heritage Month Proclamation be declared. Clear, actionable, clear and consistent, and actionable. Oh my God. You'll get it, Jennifer. Yeah. You'll get it. To write that down, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. Excellent, all right. And let's vote, Anika? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Mandy? Aye. Pat? Aye. And I'm an I as well. So that, thank you, Dorothy. Thank you so much for thank your you. work. Yes. And um, we will get it over to Athena and to Lynn so that it can go to the council. Good. Thank you. Of course, I don't know what actionable is, but, you know. It means it can be enacted. It can, it oh, can okay. happen. <laughs> good. Okay. It means that there's nothing in it that's against the law. <laughs> good. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dorothy. So I'm going to say Dorothy. Goodbye, and I'm going to leave right here. Very good. Thank you. All right. And so um, we are moving on to the Arbor Day proclamation. And we have, uh, sorry, excuse me, just one second. We have Sarah Rose Lawler in the audience who we are gonna move in to uh, work with us on this. And Sarah is the chair of the APSTC and we're very happy that she's able to join us today. All right. Good morning. Good morning, Sarah. <laughs> Sorry to make you wait. No problem. And I want to um, just uh, apologize in advance. I'm home with my four month old daughter. So there might be some noise and, um, you know, sudden unavailability on my end, but just wanted to give you all a heads up that I've got a baby. So <laughs> no worries. Um, thanks. And thank you for um, being willing to come as the uh, lead on this and, and the I know that the whole committee is the sponsor for this we have that here. So just to give you a little bit of a background I think you caught a little bit of what we were doing with the last proclamation but our job is to review this for clarity consistency and actionability. So we usually go through paragraph by paragraph and um, that's what we're looking for when we review and if there's a question um, that we have that you might be able to answer, um, or if you have any comments to add, please do. And also, I would love to just hear a quick background on this proclamation, um, if you uh, would be willing to share that with the committee. Um, 
Sure. Uh, I don't know a lot about the background of the proclamation itself, um, but Arbor Day is a, a great way for us to celebrate trees in Amherst. Um, the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee um, has really been focusing on planting new trees um, and maintaining canopy cover. Uh, we have a couple of new initiatives about um, getting some funding for tree planting in the town um, budget. Uh, we previously have been working off of a, a budget item that was voted in uh, to effect by uh, town council. I believe it was about 10 years ago at this point. And so that was supposed to last for two years and we've been stretching it out all the way up until last year. Um, now we're funded entirely by donations um, and anything that goes into the tree replacement fund when people cut down um, public shade trees for typically development projects. Um, so we've, we're working on getting some more funding. Uh, we do second Saturday plantings every, um, every second Saturday of the month from April until November. Uh, and that's a great way to try to reach out to the community. We're really just trying to, uh, to spread uh, outreach in Amherst about how important trees are to our community. Uh, and there's a couple of different initiatives that we're also working on on the state level. Um, to make sure that trees are included in things like the complete streets um, program at the state level, which right now doesn't really include any green infrastructure options. So we're really trying to just look out for trees and Arbor Day is the biggest uh, outreach that we have for our committee. We're pretty small um, and not very well known. And so this is the biggest time we have in the year to do outreach. We have a tabling event that's going to be on Saturday the 30th at the uh, farmer's market on um, Town Common, where we will be handing out seedlings, um, promoting Arbor Day um, and the work that the Shade Tree Committee does. And we've also recently got the news that the Amherst History Museum has gotten a grant to protect uh, the two his historic trees that were planted in front of the Amherst History Museum, um, London Plain Trees. So we are collaborating with them about the history of that tree and uh, hoping to have them kind of collaborate with us on our tabling event on the 30th. And we also are looking uh, to get a speaker to come to that event, um, which is right now being kind of worked out. We just got news that we uh, got the grant for that as well. So we need to get uh, paperwork in hand before we can move forward to, to bring our speaker in. Um, but that's pretty much where the Shade Tree Committee is at for Arbor Day. Um, and the proclamation just helps us kind of sponsors the committee and, and furthers outreach in the town so that we have more of an event and try to get as many people invested and involved as possible. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, really appreciate that. And is Julian Hine, is Julian still with you all on that? On that? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> yes, yes. He's on the committee um, and he's actually our, our treasurer right now. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I think that event on the 30th follows the cleanup day action. So if you're working with your constituents, I think everyone's invited and encouraged to go to the common after. And I think that's part of the celebration of festivities with the cleanup day. That's good. Excellent. Thank you, Jennifer. I can also add that it's from 7.30 to 1.30. Um, and we are going to be advertising while we are there our um, tree tour. So uh, a couple of our committee members have put together a tree tour of noticeable uh, trees, public trees in Amherst. Um, and that is going to be held at 2 p.m. on Sunday, May 8th. Um, Eventually it's going to be a self-guided tour, but to kind of kick it off and increase awareness about this, uh, we are having a guided um, tree tour on, on that day. 
Um, so the meeting place is uh, in front of the Historical Society next to the Jones Library. And uh, we'll kick off at 2 p.m. and then do a walking tour of uh, noticeable significant trees downtown. Um, and then that will be available as a self-guided tour um, so that anyone can, can take at any time. Did you say May 8th? Yes, yes, Sunday, May 8th at 2 p.m. Anika, jump right in. I, I actually have a question about two trees to know if um, I, I feel like you probably have identified them. So they are, I guess it would be Woodside Avenue. They're two trees that um, that align the, um, the entrance going to the Zion Church. And they, they, they really, they do not look like any other trees in Amherst. They almost look like a, a redwood tree. <clears throat> I was wondering if you knew about those trees, Sarah, and if they had been identified. Um, so I don't, I don't know uh, those trees personally um, without going and seeing them in person um, to be able to give you a, a positive ID, but we do have um, a town tree map, uh, which doesn't have uh, every tree in town, but a lot of the trees in the core downtown area. Um, so it's the ta Amherst Town Tree Inventory. It's available on the town website. You can find it. Um, I believe the best place is to go to the Public Shade Tree Committee page first, and then you can get there through links. Um, one of the grants that we uh, applied for uh, was to get an update to that tree inventory. So if the, those two particular trees are not on the current tree inventory, um, I'll just make a note, and that's something that we can definitely uh, do for the, the update of the tree inventory. And um, I would also recommend uh, Alan Snow is our tree warden, and he is excellent at tree IDs. So if you happen to see Alan, um, you could certainly ask him if he knows those trees. He's really familiar with all of the, you know, um, significant noticeable trees downtown. Um, and I'll just make a note that we can uh, ask about that those two in particular at our next meeting. Thank you. Who knew there was a whole tree inventory and everything? I didn't. So I'm really they're, happy. They're so them. interesting. These trees, they, they stand out because they just do not look like the others, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and begin to review this. So um, Mandy and Pat, was this, this is an annual proclamation, right? So do we want to add date or... And then, um, it, Shalini is the counselor sponsor on this. And so what we'll do here, Sarah, is just go through paragraph by paragraph. Um, and we're gonna start with the whereas in 1872. And just jump right in if, if you have comments on this. Okay. So maybe I'm reading this but wrong, but call, do we have to have the called Arbor Day? So be set aside for the planting of trees and this holiday called Arbor Day. Something is... I, uh, I think it's a, supposed to be a special day called Arbor Day. But I agree, it's kind of clunky wording. So, this may be set aside for the planting of trees. And this day called, yeah. which was first observed or specialty we said called Arbor Day. 
and great. Oh wait, no, hold on. Which was first observed with the planting of more, can we just say which was first observed? Yeah, I don't think you need the then there. Right. All right. Anything else on this one? No? Okay. There's a very minor thing just up where it says council sponsors. It should be council sponsor because it's just challenging. I got it in one spot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you're that's good. I caught it one place, not two. So my question on the next one, the Arbor Day, is that a specific day in April? Is it always like April 15th? I don't even know what day it is, but it is always is it always a specific day? No, it's always the last Friday in April. Okay. And so Arbor okay. Day, oh, Arbor Day true? itself is the 29th. And we are doing our event on the following Saturdays to coincide with the farmer's market for tabling. So the, the, um, the national and global holiday is celebrated on the last Friday in April. Yeah, oh, got that, okay, <laughs> perfect. Okay, let's move on to the next. That's good. Good. All right, next. In the section where um, we talk about trees capture carbon and greenhouse gases, um, I think another uh, important benefit of trees is they reduce runoff um, and improve uh, infiltration and moderate the water table. Just um, trees do a lot for managing water, flooding, yep. um, erosion, and and that's uh, considering our the changes we've been experiencing in the Northeast with a lot of flooding events um, and a lot of rain. I think that's a, an important. Uh, benefit of trees that could stand to be mentioned in that paragraph. Um, they, they improve um, water quality and slow runoff is maybe an easy way to say that. They modulate the water table. Mm -hmm. We don't have to get that technical. <laughs> <laughs> My training is as an ecological designer, so uh, we don't have to get that technical for this document, but. <laughs> Okay, good. All right. Um, so I think we're at whereas trees can increase property values. Uh, nothing, nothing. We could also, I mean, there's a, there's a lot to add if we're really trying to kind of bolster the case for trees. Um, they reduce heating and cooling costs for homes. Um, and they also have been proven to enhance um, mood, lower crime, um, and uh, help with healing uh, and depression. Wow. Makes sense to me. Yeah. There's a really interesting study um, makes sense. about uh, <clears throat> patients in hospitals. If they have a view of a tree out their window, they feel better, faster, and heal more quickly than if they have a view of a building out of their window. Um, so something just as simple as being able to see a tree can have a, a great impact on mental, physical, and emotional health. Mm -hmm. um, cut heating, cooling costs, um, and reduce crime. That's one of the points that we use a lot when we're talking about, um... oh, it's eluding me. because perpetrators run into the trunks. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it, it shows that a neighborhood um, is more cared for. Mm. Yeah. And so um, the same thing is like the graffiti case, right? Like if you have graffiti on the walls, it leads people, it le increases crime because people believe it's a place that's not watched or cared for. Um, whereas if you don't have graffiti and if you do have trees, um, it's it's a social cue that this yeah. is a place that yeah. is uh, is cared for and monitored. Thank you, Sarah. Our mm. environmental justice neighborhoods. That's what I was Thank thinking you. of. <laughs> I don't know why the reduced crime piece is something is not settling for me. And I don't, I don't have words for it right now. So um, we don't have to include it here if you don't want to. Um, that is a point that's often best if you have sources, which I we're not going to do for this the, this document so we can easily reduce um, take that out it's just something that we talk about um, when we espouse the wonders of trees um, but for the purposes of this we can remove it if that makes you more comfortable Sarah as a side note could you send me um, that uh, a way to get that information because I would like to read it myself um, sure it's very I'm with you <laughs> I would love to yeah yeah thank you so I have a question in the what was originally the last whereas. Um, so I got the Word document. Our packet had last year's proclamation in PDF. Um, I pulled the Word document from 2020, GOL packet, which had 32 years, as did 2021's proclamation. And so my question, which means we've been forgetting to update it, which makes me wonder how long we've actually been a tree you know, a tree city. tree city. And so Sarah, do you know what year we were first declared a tree city? I, I don't remember the date off the top of my head, but I think I could probably find that information pretty easily. Cause it might be wiser for us to put the year in so we don't forget to always update it. Right. Yeah. So that it says yeah. just since, since whatever year. I'm trying to see if I could find it. Um, hmm. Okay. We'll try, well, we'll, to find we'll, that. we'll try to find that. Yeah, definitely. And Sarah, if you find it, you can just use the same email address that I, um, that we corresponded on and just send it to me if you can find it. Okay. All right. So we are at the final whereas. Which I that's already been worked up, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's great. And the town. So we normally don't yeah. set these out. And I think to keep it on one page, we can't now. And I don't think it should be, uh, yeah. Good. All right. So are there any other comments or questions on this before we um, ask Pat to make a motion? <laughs> I'm not making it. <laughs> Come on. I'll make it. I actually wrote like, it down. I, I, it down it I never get oh, the word Jennifer right. can make it because she's, she's, she's practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Want to make it, Pat? Um, nope. Okay. You can second. Uh, I... <laughs> Um, I move that the Arbor Day, that the Arbor Month proclamation for 2022 is clear, consistent, and actionable. Second. Yeah, great. Anika? Yes. I'm a yes. Mandy? Who, who seconded it? Mandy did. Oh, okay. I didn't hear. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an I. <laughs> Pat. Aye. 
Jennifer. Aye. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yeah. Let's see. Really, Sarah, you. you're a great multitasker. This was. <laughs> And we got a baby. On. Yeah, she's adorable. Oh, well, first What's baby. her name? Rain. No. Oh, oh, nice. Wow. Wow. Beautiful name. Beautiful name. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. I, I appreciate your time and your attention on this. So thank you. Um, and thank I'll you. I'll try to follow up both with um, some of those studies about the benefits of trees and uh, the tree city information. Great. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have any promotional materials for the event or anything like that, also send that along and we'll put it out so we can put it out. Okay. Uh, we are going to be doing uh, like a social media blast on our Facebook, Instagram, um, and next door. Uh, so we can definitely send whatever we, we post um, along as well. Should we use the same email for that as well? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. And I can send it. We'll announce it at the district three meeting, which is right before that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so we can move on to the finance committee appointment, which is just a bulletin board notice, as I understand it. Um, so Mandy's got something for us here. So what is here is um, the sample that the prior chair put into SharePoint before the council transition. So that's that's exactly what I've downloaded. Um, oops, let me track changes to it. Um, I haven't actually fully read it, um, but it's so it's going to be what GOL used last year. There is one impending Ooh. vacancy. I just looked, um, one member's term is expiring in 2022. Right, okay. And does that person have the ability to, do they have to apply again? Or there's not an automatic renewal type of thing and has to, they have to go through this process of applying? Yes, so I can walk you through how that happens, but according to our new town council policy, um, once the vacancy notice is published, um, then anyone who has submitted a CAF in the last two years is contacted by whoever is the designee for GOL to contact the people, it's generally the chair, um, to see if they would like to reapply because the only people we continue to keep in the app applicant pool is anyone who submits a C nowadays under this new policy is anyone who submits a CAF after the after the bulletin board notice is published. So you contact everyone who submitted a CAF in the last two years, ask them if they're interested and essentially tell them if you are still interested, submit a new CAF and you give them the link and all of that um, sample email communication should be somewhere. Um, you also then contact, it is potentially likely sometimes that the person who is currently in the seat that is, um, whose term is up, that CAF is older than two years because some terms are three years. And so you also affirmatively contact that person and say, if you're interested in renewing, you need to submit a new CAF. Um, so, so that's the process that happens sort of after the bulletin board notice is published. The next step for the, for the committee is to, after the bulletin board notice is published, is to declare an applicant pool sufficient, which cannot be done for at least 14 days from the time that bulletin board notice is published, according to the, um, that's actually, I think, a charter requirement. Um, and so we have to wait 14 days, and then we gather, the, the, the chair generally gathers information about how many CAFs have been submitted since the bulletin board notice was there, how many applicants are there, how many vacancies are there, is the pool sufficient to move on towards essentially interviewing people? Um, so that's sort of the next step after this one. And then we interview them? Yes. And then we provide a recommendation to who? To the whole council. The whole council, okay. And where would I get the CAFs, the two years of CAFs? Where would I? There get? is in SharePoint an entire folder about um, the current applicant pools, the 
um, as of when George, when the transition happened. Um, okay. I don't believe any CIFs have been submitted for the finance committee since okay. um, that transition. We've all gotten those emails. I've been paying attention because I have to send the emails acknowledging receipt of them for other committees. So I don't think any have been submitted for finance. Um, so that list is in there. I can meet with you later, Michelle, to help walk you through the whole process um, and where documents are and where to find them. We can set up a meeting to help you walk you through that. Um, thank you, thank cause, you. Because sadly and scarily, I think I'm the only counselor on the current council that has run, managed a process before. I'm not the only one obviously that has been through the process, but I think Evan did it before, um, Darcy did it before, Sarah did it before, George did it before, and I did it before. <laughs> and so I, I'm working on getting Pam, our, my vice chair and CRC, also up to date so, and, and involved in it so that that doesn't happen again, hopefully. Um, if you want to meet with I both like of us, if that, if that would make it easier to meet with both of us, um, you know, I've Let already met with Pam and, and walked her through that system because she's we're, we're actively managing two appointment processes right now. And what did you say, Anika? I, I, I was just saying I would either like to join or else you can pass this along to me to show join. Me. Yeah, That's that would be perfect. You know, we can put, um we can put um we can meet with both I can meet with both of you since you know Anika you're the vice chair I, I think it's wise to keep multiple yeah. people informed um I'll, I'll put Michelle's name down here for now since she's the chair but yeah let's set up a meeting the three of us to walk through that awesome okay so Right now, um, once we approve this and this goes on the bulletin, can we start, and I know we're going to meet to do this, but just one quick question, like, would I reach out immediately to the person who is expiring on the finance committee or do we have to wait the full for the full amount of days? Once this is posted. Yes. So that if they submit a new CAF, it's it's not submitted before this posting so so you don't know the the 14 days is before gol can declare the pool sufficient and move on in the process Perfect. so you actually would like you want to do it within before the next time gol is seeking to make that declaration basically great all right so do we have to do something like do we have to vote we have to vote this we have to recommend this is that we right? don't have to vote this we just as a committee the the rules the council policy requires the committee to see it before it's posted to review it before it's posted <laughs> okay so at this point it can just go to athena and if we are in, on we have consensus on this and then um and then athena can post it all right are there any other questions or comments about this? All right, Mandy, thanks so much for having this readily available. Appreciate that. Um, okay, so let's do a quick, um, well, let's adopt quickly the meeting minutes from March 30th. Is everyone okay for another couple minutes until about 11.15? Okay. Jennifer? Yeah, no, I was just, I assume that the meeting, because it started an hour late, would go an hour late. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, um, I think we briefly talked about that, Pat, when, when we met the other day. Um, and I, there's just been a lot going on getting to this point. So um, I did not send out an email asking. I can't stay personally um, beyond 11.15. Oh, okay, that's fine. I just wanted to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no and I think I and it also has a, yeah. Right, and right. I must admit, I forgot that, so. Oh, that's okay, yeah. So um, if everyone is fine, we'll finish up at 11.15 and then we'll meet for our next meeting will be, um, let's see here, the 27th. And so let's just talk about that then for a second. Um, we have to 
do the the discussion and make a recommendation on the town council standing committee structure. Um, we have had the equity lens review process on here for quite a while. Um, we also, I would also like us to work on a process for proclamations at some point, but let me just look at, oh, I know what it was. The resolution, the plant medicine resolution, I'm really hoping that that will be ready for the next meeting. It was supposed to be part of this meeting, but the sponsors are still working on it. So um, I'm hoping that will be ready. And I will disclose that that has a lot of words. It's sort of like a heady <laughs> resolution. <laughs> so um, it will take us some time to get to go through that. And I know that our community sponsors are very invested in this and very passionate. And so they will likely be here with us doing that. And it may be more than one. Um, Should we extend the time? Should we extend our meeting time a bit? We may, I mean, depending, depending on what we, you know, how much we want to get done next, next meeting, um, because I'm just quickly looking here to make sure there aren't any Sometimes like with the Arbor Day proclamation, I didn't learn about it until I think it was Friday or Thursday. So um, I might get a proclamation sent to me, Mandy and Pat, there's probably a list in the SharePoint, right? Of all of them. Yeah, there is. I need, I'm going to take a look at that. And if there's anything that I see hasn't been sent to me yet that is coming up, I'll make sure that I get it from whoever has it. Um, because I know they come from different committees. Um, um, May is, we should have an AAPI Islander Heritage Month proclamation, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, okay. Art Week, Memorial Day, and Children's Mental Health Awareness Week. Those all have, to be, yeah, have I think to be done in May or in advance of May? They, they are all they should be done at the 27th meeting. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I don't think we did art week last year. Memorial day does not need to be because that's Memorial day. So that, that could wait till a May meeting, but Asian Pacific Islander heritage month, Asian American Pacific and Pacific Islander heritage month is all of May and children's mental health awareness week is listed as the first week in May on yeah. this calendar. Okay. So maybe we do want to have a little bit of a longer meeting next week to make up if people are able to do, not next week, but the uh, 27th, if people are able to do that so that we can get through all of that. Um, or. I wonder if we couldn't, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no, please, Pat, go ahead. I'm sorry. I wonder if we couldn't have uh, a couple of people work together and, and, and assign different resolutions so that they've already been looked at at least once, uh, and then it might make going through them a little faster. I mean, Mandy Joe already does that, but I, you know, here we were talking about what six of them, four or five, six of them, and I'm wondering if that would speed up the process a little bit. This one time, particularly, yeah. You know, you know, and, and I so say two we, people because it's good to have more than one set of five. We can't assign two a formally without violating oh. a meeting law. Um, okay. But, okay. But what I would say about the longer one is if we keep in mind that we're not reviewing for substance at all, we're only looking for clarity, consistency, and actionability, we can probably move the review through quicker, even okay. if it is a long one. It is. Yeah. And it may bring up some stuff for people. Like I just want to be really transparent. Right. <laughs> and that, that's why for some of these longer ones, you have to remember no matter what you think about the content, you're not, right. you're not right. commenting on, <laughs> I'm not sure about whether, you know, it really is just a non-substantive clarity. Is this clear? You know, so if you don't understand something that says, you know, something like that, but that might help us get through it quicker if we keep in mind um, that we're right. not here to discuss the merits of right. that proclamation or resolution. And the sponsors are really working hard to get it into a form that is digestible to the to the council. So as I think the drugs are. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we're going to be having it. No, I'm not, I'm not saying more. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's really, it's really fascinating stuff. Um, I have to say, yeah, um, so, I mean, the other thing is we could, we could, no, we, can we, I was going to say we could meet next week if we want to as an extra meeting um, and then just keep them both to the regular amount of time. Um, how do people feel about that? that would I would be prefer to take next week off. I'm not okay. traveling, but it would be nice since it's April break not to. Break. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's fair. Okay. So can I say the- one thing? Uh, because and that's fine, Manny. I don't have any problem with that. Uh, it's not about that. But we often don't remember to check with Athena um, about what scheduling might be and whether that's something that she can do or she assigned uh, elsewhere. So we kind of forget her as a, she's actually a, me- a member of this committee and needs to be consulted. So if we're going to change our time or anything like that, um, I think that we need to check in with her as well. That's all. I think that's a great idea, Pat. I did, Athena and I had a brief check-in about that in terms of um, whether, you know, how often if we needed to go over. And, and I think, Athena, maybe you want to speak, or can you hear us? <laughs> maybe you <laughs> I am here. I'm taking minutes. So. <laughs> um, will you say something about that? Because we, I know you had sent me an email about that. And I just, I be good for the committee to hear just in terms of like your um perception on that um scheduling meetings it is it is nice to give me a heads up if you're planning on scheduling an additional meeting just because right now i'm covering um the committee meetings for minutes but i'm scheduling um interviews for minute takers next week and the following week So I'm hoping to have somebody set for you so you'll be less reliant on me. There is that issue of um, the Zoom meetings overlap. So if there's GOL going on at the same time that I have something else scheduled, then that can be a conflict. But um, as long as I know about it ahead of time, then I can make sure that um, either my Zoom room is open so that um, there's no conflict or somebody else can schedule the meeting. It just takes a little bit of extra logistical legwork, but I'm happy to make that happen if you need to schedule an additional meeting. Great. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to do the 27th and do we want to do, we're going to say nine to 1130 that day. If that works for everyone, including Athena. Sounds good. Yes, thanks. But would you say Nika? Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Everyone good with that. All right. And Athena, you're good with that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. And I don't think we need to do public comment because there aren't any attendees. Are we uh, trying to get minutes adopted? Yes. We yeah. I'll move to adopt the minutes. March 30. March 30th, 2022 minutes. I was working on that date. <laughs> Second, the Angelus. Okay. Um, great. Anika? Yes. Mandy? Aye. Pat? Aye. Jennifer? I, I'm an I. Okay, sorry I didn't ask for discussion. <laughs> Got a little. Someone would have said something. If, In this uh, group, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and I don't have any items that were not anticipated. Um, I think we did the agenda review. Does anyone have any announcements? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. So I will move to adjourn the meeting at 11.21 a.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Athena. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.